Brazil is headed for a presidential runoff vote at the end of this month. Incumbent President Jair Bolsonaro has built his political identity on attacking LGBTQ rights, women, racial minorities, indigenous communities, and the environment. It's all symptomatic of what Brazilian filmmaker Fernando Grostein Andrade calls catastrophic masculinity. His new documentary, Breaking Myths, looks at the rise and legacy of Bolsonaro through that lens of machismo. The film is narrated by by his husband, Fernando Siqueira, and the couple joins us as today's prospective guests from their home in Los Angeles. Uh, I want to thank you both so much for speaking with us here on France 24. Uh, can you just start by telling us uh, what motivated you to make this film? Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. So um, I receive a, a death threats in Brazil uh, because I did some interviews uh, highlighting the risk of uh, Bolsonaro just before his presidential run. So we got these threats and we took it serious and we decided to uh, uh, move to California in exile. When we arrived here, uh, we felt that the privilege to be living here, protected, came with a big responsibility. And the way we respond to that was doing this film uh, to show how fragile and catastrophic is the masculinity of President Jair Bolsonaro. And many people are familiar with that term toxic masculinity, but you've come up with this concept of catastrophic masculinity to describe Jair Bolsonaro. How do you define catastrophic masculinity and what impact has it had on Brazilian society? Yeah, we did a close study on Bolsonaro's life and action and we thought that the term toxic masculinity was too small for someone who is was, was someone is, who is causing so much damage. So we proposed the new term, uh, the, the, sorry, we proposed this new term, catastrophic masculinity, because we think that toxic masculinity is when a man produces harm to an individual or to a small group of individuals. The case of Bolsonaro or people like Donald Trump is when men cause uh, uh, damage to a whole country, to a whole continent, or to the planet. So it's uh, in a catastrophic level. And your film does draw a very clear parallel with Donald Trump and even other leaders like Vladimir Putin. Why was it important to you to make those parallels with politicians that are outside of Brazil? Uh, first, because uh, in terms of America, the U.S. Uh, loves to, to portray itself like the moral compass of the world. But like with the, uh, the presidency of Donald Trump, this idea, which was not very uh, uh, accurate at, uh, at the first place, sh uh, showed how it was like a lie, you know. So I think it's important for like Americans to know the responsibility uh, that they carry with their leadership in the world, you know. So when you see like uh, the fake news scheme that happened uh, in Brazil uh, in the last election, that was not something created in Brazil. That was something imported from the U.S. and Donald Trump. So I think it's important that like if U.S. wants to, to uh, have this leadership role in the world, that they do a, like a better job and, and, and see the consequences of their actions in, in other parts of the world. And re regarding the, the what you ask about the the the, the uh, how to say semelhanças the the similarities. the similarities between Trump, Putin, and Bolsonaro, like they represent like masculinity as as it was like uh, a, a structure of power that like if you see the American presidency, like all presidents are men, all uh, uh, most of them like uh, white. So we think that the world deserves more diversity. And one of the things that's so striking and engaging about your documentary is that it's very personal. You tell the story of your own childhood in parallel with Jair Bolsonaro's. Can you talk a little bit about the process and how you came up with that narrative structure? Uh, this was not something that like I chose, that something that like happened in the, uh, uh, as through the editing of the film. So first, I thought it was important to be very open with the audience, like where I come from. Uh, so my perspective is like a, a gay, uh, middle class, uh, white Brazilian. So because I hate when documentaries like 
have a, a narrator like pretending that is like the voice of God with like the the ultimate truth, you know. So it was important to show where I, where I was coming from. Uh, but then, like wh- as we're editing the film, the amount of like damage uh, and 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 bad things and energy that Bolsonaro emanates was so big that we thought it was important to to cut from like uh, the LGBTQ resistance and other people's life as well, like resisting resisting to this uh, uh, monster uh, rather than just having him the whole time. It is refreshing to, to have that alternative vision of, of masculinity and to, to open the definition of what masculinity means. Uh, you grew up, uh, you were saying, you know, middle class in Brazil. Your father was actually the editor of Brazilian Playboy, which I gave you, imagine gave you a pretty narrow idea of, na- of masculinity growing up. Could maybe each of you just talk about what it was like for you growing up and coming out as gay in Brazil? Yeah, um, I, me and Fernando, we are from different generations. So for him, growing up in the 80s, 90s, um, it was way harder than for me that I grew up in the 2000s. So I had so much more um, reference to um, gay culture. So I had the pop singers um, singing about gay stuff or um, TVs uh, showing uh, programs that had like gay characters or movies. And I also had, even in Brazil, uh, Jean Wiedes was already in Congress uh, when I was growing up, so he was already a politician that was out and proud. So uh, that brings me back to how much I think it's important for people to have references in a pop culture of um, of who they are, because that helps a kid or someone who's growing up and dealing with a lot of stuff to identify with something. something. And um, this is how I grew up, and this is the difference we had growing And you two released this film online in mid-September, ahead of the first round of Brazil's presidential election. Have you had any feedback about how it's being received in Brazil? Yes, like yesterday, the the Portuguese version hit uh, one million views on YouTube. And the massive uh, amount of feedback you receive is like very, very positive. Uh, especially from the LGBT community as a source for them to like watch the film together with their family. Because I think this is like uh, everywhere in the world, like the majority of LGBTQ people, they are part of a family that has like a a conservative uh, uh, part, you know, and the other way around, like almost all conservative families, there is some LGBTQ uh, member. So we think this film is like a, a device for these two different people to watch and and be able to to discuss on like better terms. And the documentary really highlights political violence in Brazil. As you said, you yourselves moved to California after receiving death death threats. What would it take for you to feel safe going back? Uh, unfortunately. Um, I don't see any possibility of the violence going down in Brazil. Um, we already saw cases of uh, people being murdered recently uh, just for being against Bolsonaro and support the left party. Uh, we see the, the uh, Bolsonaro has intimate uh, uh, connections with the militia, which can be basically described like the uh, police mafia. And he's electing several people on the Congress. So unfortunately, the situation is getting worse and worse. And this concerns the whole world, especially because Brazil uh, has the Amazon forest, uh, which is seriously at stake because Bolsonaro is removing every protection that he has, uh, uh, that he can, sorry. And so you think that if Jair Bolsonaro, as polls suggest, does get kicked out of office, that wouldn't be enough to change the course of Brazil? No, because like even if he's kicked out, people don't know if, if he's going to accept or not. And even if he accepts, uh, the disease of fascism is very present in Brazil right now. It's spread uh, on Congress, on, on, on police, on everywhere. So in the middle class, so I think it's going to take time for Brazil to, to clear the sewer uh, the same way Europe did in the 40s. Also, I think 
like um, how whoever gets in power, um, it's not Bolsonaro, it's going to take a long time for the things in the Amazon that were destroyed to grow back. This is not something that's going to be back in four years or five years. This is something that is going to take a long time to be back. All of the forest, all of the water that, that went dry because of the forests that were cut down. So... Yeah, some policies are hard to reverse. We will, of course, be watching the results of that second round very closely. Uh, Brazilian filmmakers Fernando Grostin Andrade and Fernando Sequeira, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on France 24. Uh, and to remind our viewers that their documentary, Breaking Myths, can be found on YouTube, uh, I highly recommend it. We're going to have to leave it there for this edition 